been sort of showing you over the last few days or a couple of weeks various pieces of election merchandise that uh, the corporation has had made and we found one here this is about five months off the mark now the BBC shops have been rolling this thing out but it really is an extraordinary it's a calendar it's a new publication it's the vote 2001 men of news calendar and look at that it's a beautiful thing now we've already missed January but there's Hugh Edwards there on the right. There's Hugh. Hugh, it says here, Hugh likes animals and going to the gym. The <laughs> gym. Let's have a look at that. Now, February, it's Jeremy Paxman. It's Jeremy Paxman, February. 28 dates with Jeremy. That's got to be every young man's dream. Let's just gloss over Jeremy. And, and who among us would resist that opportunity? Have a look at here. Now, March is Newsnight presenter Jeremy Vine. Now, Jeremy can handle a live two-way with Ian Paisley and a crate of bud. <laughs> you see there, he's holding the crate, but not with his hands. <laughs> now, it's April, and it's... <laughs> Part-time host of Question Time and full-time lover, uh, election call host Peter Sissons. Uh, and I don't know about a two-way, this fellow looks like he could handle a four-way right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, now what about this month? May, of course, is George Alagaya. There he is. If you're cooking, George, I'll provide the mayonnaise. <laughs> Let's do a few more. Let's get to oh, August. Of course, it's Amarillo Waller in August. But September now. Michael Burke is Mr. Man <laughs> of New September. And even here, the way he's squatting makes me feel like it's my fault. <laughs> you know, with Marks and Spencers announcing a £70 million drop in profits, uh, house prices about to, prom uh, to plummet even, and mortgage lending at its highest level ever, what more prescient time than this to welcome, with his eye on the news, the co-anchor of BBC Two's flagship daily business programme, Working Lunch, the man behind Shaw's shares, it's Adam Shaw, here he is. <laughs> So, Adam, so, so we're going to look at some of the, 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 the big stories that have been hitting you. Anything on the Marks & Spencer's uh, profit fall? And the relocation, I believe. They're relocating headquarters or something. I think what really caught my eye was um, the Daily Star. I don't know if you can see that uh, Daily Star. Monica Lewinsky. Um, there's a new vacuum cleaner named after her. It's called uh, <laughs> the best sucker in the business. Right. Monica 2. You know, it's a real, real good thing. Right? Yes. OK, um, anything... OK, uh, but is there anything on Marks and Spencers or just economics in general, just the, the general yeah. uh, pending world recession? How about you know that? And what really caught my eye as well was penguins in Polonex. I mean, that's penguins in Polonex. I don't know if I... <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, lovely, latest colours. You're, I, that, so that's nice. I'm surprised that you're such a soft news man. I yeah. didn't expect that, that you would be yeah. so... Is that, are you a tabloid man? Do you like to read the tabloids? Yes, I like to read that. You know, there's another thing I saw, uh, finally, where's that from, the Metro? Yeah. Cars made out of cannabis. Uh, <laughs> they're, apparently they're going to be better than coconuts. Yeah. You know, I, they never thought of metal, I don't know. At least you could go, that's smoking. <laughs> Uh, so, so we're not going to get anything on the economy. You know, I event. really wanted to show you Big Pants, which was... <laughs> I want Big Pants Telegraph. That was in the Telegraph. Big Pants are in because of that film. What, what was the film called? Uh, Bridget Jones. Is that, yeah. So you saw it too? Yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> big Pants. Yes. So that was, that's nice. So, you know, that's... Well, do us, now, I understand. I, 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 um, could you do something for us? That, could you just give us a genuine business story and something that has really caught your eye because it does seem that there are an, an enormous number of uh, economics seems to be more in the news than it ever has been before um anything on the property market crash or just you, any big economic story in general you, could you really, seriously you really want to would you yes please well you know i think the the key problem at the moment you mentioned that bubble in the high tech stocks which is really promoting all the problems in prices if you actually look at the nasdaq the FTSE, the tech market and you look at the pe ratios there at the moment <laughs> very very high indeed i think if you want to really look at these markets you're looking for bottom feeders you're looking for price earnings ratios dividend covers dividend yields you can get some of those at the moment some real capital growth looking for capital gain you know that's where the story is <laughs> Right. Um, <laughs> do you know how to get monkey shit out of a lapel? <laughs> so, no, all right. Have you ever had a monkey on your back? Like <laughs> <laughs> all right, Adam. Well, thank you very much. Thank and you, you certainly gave us what we asked. So thanks very much for coming out. <laughs> it's Adam Shaw from Working Lunch. Thank you very much, sir. Nice to go.
Uh, we're going to have a look now at what's coming up next week, uh, not on this program, but... Um, but obviously the, uh, the, the, ch the schedules will continue without us somehow. I'm not sure how they're going to manage that one. Uh, but uh, So we're going to have a look at some of the stuff that's appearing on this channel, BBC Three. <clears throat> oh, yes. Um, <laughs> there will be this programme. Here's a clip. The Bosnian Serb military says its forces have now withdrawn from the town of Mirkinich Grad. If so, it's evidence of what the Bosnian Serb political leadership has long feared, that the military balance is once again tipping against them. The Bosnian Serbs now have an overwhelming interest in getting a ceasefire to freeze the confrontation lines. But they... <laughs> yes, it's, it's a new series of Auntie's Warzone Bloomers. We're all going to be forward to that. <laughs> also, um, now this is... Now, don't tell me that this channel isn't commissioning risky, edgy, innovative, different, refreshing entertainment. Uh, there is... There, there's a new show. It's called Late Night Riot Training, The Musical. Hey, Frankie, that guy's covered in maps! And kick and punch and bat and scream and bat. Sasha, no laughing. And run, 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 and stop. Right, let's reset and go again. We're two days away from opening night and everyone's very excited. We've got a fabulous closing routine based on Miss Saigon. To be honest, it's a bit of a technical nightmare, but, you know, fingers crossed. and roll and stomach in and back. We're previewing at the Alhambra Theatre in Bradford and if it's a hit, we'll go into the West End. Next year, we're doing the 1968 Paris riots and uh, I don't think I'm giving too much away if I say that Wayne sleeps pretty much on board as choreographer. <laughs> What we do at this point in the programme is we welcome along uh, uh, a desk correspondent who shares his or her view of uh, the day's events or the week's events, the various news and current affairs stuff that's going on. Uh, tonight is no exception, uh, and what we've done is we've invited uh, a, a nine-year-old young man to come and join us. His name is Scott Ka Cowan. Excuse me. Please make him feel very welcome. Here he is. <laughs> So, how are you, Scott? I'm fine. It's nice to have you here. Thank you very much for, for coming along. Um, and now, have you, have you seen any papers? Have you read any newspapers uh, lately? Well, I've read a few. Yeah? What stories did you, did you see? The bombing... Oh, the, uh, the bombing, where was this? Of... BBC. Oh, the BBC bombing, right. So you haven't read any recent newspapers. <laughs> uh, oh, so what did, now what did you make of that? Did that make you nervous about coming here, the, the bombing at the BBC? Not really. No. Uh, heard of any other news lately? Uh, what about the election? Have you been following any of the election? A bit. Yeah? So what have you noticed about that? Um, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much the same as all of us, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of confusing. They, to me, they all sort of sound the same. Mm. Yeah. What do you think of Tony Blair? What, do you, what about him as a Prime Minister? Um, I think he'd be all right. Yeah. Well, let, let's hope he gets in, eh? <laughs> uh, are you OK, Scott? Are you feeling OK? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Cause, uh, all right. Because after the show, we'll go out and we'll get drunk like men, yeah? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. Uh, uh, Got to live your life, eh, Scott? <laughs> hey? <laughs> ah! Hey? <laughs> What do you do with your life? Do you have a girlfriend? Are you seeing girls? How old are you? You're nine. Now, now, oh, there's a call there. <laughs> it's the child abuse people. They're worried. Now, what's, <laughs> um, now but you're nine years old. Now, now I, I can barely remember what it was. How old do you think I am, first of all? I don't know. Have a guess. Take a guess. Take a look at me and take a fair guess at my age. 42. 42? <laughs> Uh, 
I'm 35 years old. Oh. Old enough to have learnt a little of life, young enough to be in touch, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah? What do you do? What are your hobbies? What do you